I wake up with a headache and stumble into the bathroom to brush my teeth. I look into the mirror and notice that I only blink with one eye. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> what? But whatever. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that imply? You blink with one eye? <laughs> School proceeds as normal until I start feeling extremely fatigued during the fifth period. Something's not right. I end up calling mom. She always knows what to do. It seems like your son has a Bell's palsy. It might take around a month to recover. Oh, okay. Great. Out of all the rare, uh, rare illnesses, my body decided to get this one. At least it's not permanent, I guess. Palsy usually has something to, something to do with the brain, right? Hmm. Miss, missing a month of school before exams sounds like the worst case scenario. It's just half my face staying unresponsive, yet my whole body feels numb. I can barely focus on the phone screen as I type my message back to Andre who was curious enough to investigate my sudden disappearance from class. You okay? Uh, got hospitalized with face paralysis. <laughs> the fuck is that? The fuck is that indeed? What my eyes can't blink and my mouth is stuck in convoluted grimace. You know, you know what they say about like, if you make a, a, a silly face, it's gonna stay stuck that way? Anyway, that's, that's, that, I don't know, that's actually offensive, I don't know. <laughs> Probably Bell's palsy is like a real thing. Uh, thank God no one came to visit. I close my eyes, one manually, and hope that the numbness will go away in the morning. It doesn't. Well, again, hopefully, I, the doctor did say like it would, you know, recover in the bottom up. So it's a good thing it's only temporary, at the very least. Hospital food is tasteless. That doesn't really matter since I'm going to be discharged today. No one stays at hospitals for more than two days unless you're fatally injured. Mother asked her acquaintances to give me a ride home. What followed were two weeks of pills and 24 hours sleep and two more weeks of staring at the ceiling because my mind couldn't focus on anything else. Henrietta came to visit while you were sleeping. She brought some printouts from school. Bless her. Among the stuff Audrey brought, I found a notebook with Vincent's name on it. I hope you find these notes useful. Get well soon, said the note inside. I'm mortified. I ended up being a burden to them both. I try to shake the feeling off and be sincerely grateful, but end up being choked by guilt. I have to catch up. Become better. More capable. If I'm not ahead of others, then my self-worth is no better than zero. Oh, that's the first- that's- that's- that's the- the first mistake. You know, trying to compare your other, yourself to others, but anyway. I need to thank people who care about me soon. When I finally became able to come outside after what felt like forever, dandelions were in full bloom. I'm allergic to those in real life, by the way. I'll be like, damn it. You know, it's like one bad thing to another. But anyway, Vincent has his nose buried into a notebook lately. He's definitely writing something, but I never pry. I think there are two ways to go about writing. To be the one in power or to give power to your readers. You can write a piece so flawless and complete that your awestruck reader will be rendered speechless or create a flawed, seemingly incomplete work, prompting the reader co to contribute with better ideas. Which would you prefer? Hmm. Playing God or making a fool out of myself? Tough choice indeed. So, the latter sounds like less pressure, so I'll take that one. That way every reader can become a co-creator, even if they get last at my expense, and then they make a lot of, like, fan fiction, I guess, I don't know. I see. Besides, if something is considered ideal, you can only make copies of, uh, of it without creating anything new. That doesn't sound too creative to me. More importantly, what would be your choice? Me? Well, what do you think? I think you want to leave it at a rhetorical question. How are your grades coming along, by the way? Well, looks like I'll be one of the few people invited to the war ceremony. Wow, you're amazing. <laughs> I didn't really have a choice. Do you think you'd be able to graduate with honors? Nah, I totally blew my chem and math grades. So it make a bit of time to come to terms with the fact that I'm not that smart. Wish I didn't grow up thinking that doing well in academics would guarantee me a secure future though. Or anything really. Right now I just want to sleep my life away. <laughs> By the way, how's your mother feeling? She's okay. Surprisingly enough. I'm doing my best to help her too. Even if it means working retail. Oh, that's, that's hell by the way. That's hell you're walking into. <laughs> retail. I'm sure of it. She used to be far more violent before. Never laid a hand on me, though. It was always something else. Utensils, clothes, books. 
The only thing I regret is that as a kid, I tried to make her less aggressive by saying I'll kill myself. That was extremely selfish for me. You were a child. You didn't know any better. Still, it's so weird. Out of, much, out of all the solutions in my four-year-old mind, they always jumped to suicide. You know, that's, again, that kind of extreme thing to think about when you're four years old. I feel like. Vincent touches the bruise on his cheek only somewhat consciously. I guess I just want to guilt trip, uh, guilt trip her into caring. I see. So that idea isn't foreign to you too. What do you mean? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. You know, it's just, it's just suicidal ideation, I guess. Is that how you say it? Anyway, don't worry. Sounds fishy. But as long as you don't want to talk about it, I'll bug off. Thank you. I would hate to be pitied. Number 23. Visit. Who's visiting? Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have come without a warning. But it's Charles, so he won't mind him all that much. I'll just return this book and go home anyway. Click. It's open. Huh. Jeez, when will they fix the lock? It's already been a month since it's been like this. This place is already a hellhole. Would it hurt them to put more effort to making it a little bit safer? The elevator is taking too long. Did someone just come in? There. Keep quiet, then we'll get hurt. Oh no. <laughs> you bitch, stop screaming. Somebody help. I hear someone opening the door floors above and a dog barking. Ugh. Okay. He ran away. Can't stay here. Blood. I mean, that's scary. Was that just a random stranger? I thought it was like maybe like someone playing a prank, like uh, uh, Charles or something. But that was just a real stranger just suddenly trying to grab her. That's 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 scary. Anyway, ring, ring, ring. Who could it be? Maybe I should pretend we're not home. Henri. There's a trail of blood behind her. It keeps dripping, staining the floor. What happened? Shit, oh, okay, don't talk. Mom, call the ambulance. Henri, help you lie down, okay? The blood will get everywhere. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be alright. If her lung isn't punctured, that is. Here. Sorry for the makeshift scarf pillow. I'll get you a real one in a bit. I'll try to stop the bleeding now. But I, I only have theoretical knowledge about it. Forgive me if it hurts. Mom will Google the right way to do it, so trust us. <laughs> Google, yes, of course, trust Google. I mean, I guess I would do that too. I mean, I, I think I read like a. I, I never got first aid training, but I read a, I read like a manual, you know, a little bit. But I guess it would depend on the type of injury. But anyway, Henri stays quiet. She must be in shock. I help her take off her shirt and look at the wound, trying not to focus on the blood oozing out. It's most definitely a knife wound. Yeah, she got stabbed. That's like really what the heck. Was that like, I, I can only assume that was just a random burglar, I guess? That's why the lock was like broken. She assumed that it was still broken, but actually someone else lockpicked it, I guess? I don't know why anyone would like rob, you know, this place though. I mean, didn't she say like it was kind of a hellhole? I don't know, anyway. Okay, this should do it. I throw the bloodstained shirt into cold water and let it sigh. The ambulance arrives quickly. I follow her to the hospital, hoping that's nothing serious. I mean, to be honest, I'm trying to think, like, again, I did I did grow up in a poor neighborhood. I was threatened by a knife before in the past. Uh, never got stabbed, though, fortunately. But yeah, that's scary, though. I don't know. When I see Henri again, she has the same absent-minded look on her face. What did they say? No internal organ damage. But it's gonna leave a scar. That's good. It sucks. Why do things like this happen? Can't everyone live in peace? She begins to tear up. Why must I be cautious of every person I see in the street? Why I must be scared of walking alone? I'm scared too. Ever since we moved in into that place, I've been paranoid of every sound. We got rid of the cockroaches, but the neighbors stayed. The true cockroaches. No. <laughs> oh, want me to get you some pepper spray? I have some in my bag. I guess pepper spray. That's illegal in Canada, but that's where, you know, where I live. You can't use pepper sprays, it turns out. I hate it. The very fact that you speak of these things like they're nothing out of the ordinary. But they are ordinary. My mom got stalked by some psycho for over a year. I got smacked with a broken bottle on the street some time ago. My neighbor's dog got mauled by a pack of strays. Life's full of misfortunes like that. Fuck that. It's unfair. It is. 
but there's nothing you can do about it, can we? You're always like this, ignoring the problem instead of doing something about it. Um, excuse me, I offered some pepper spray. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's at least doing something. <sighs> Miss Warhol. What? And what's up with the sudden formality? I didn't get to ask, but what exactly happened back then? I don't get it myself. Everything happened so quickly. He told me to stay quiet, but I screamed my lungs out anyway. Maybe he just wanted my purse. Maybe something else. I don't know. I just wanted to turn the book. Henri turns over and cries into the pillow. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I would understand. That's very scary. That's, that's, that's not... That's not something uh, you want to happen to you. You know, you could you could die. You would you could have died if you if if if, uh, if the person makes a mistake. You know, trying to mug you, whatever. That's why it's better usually to just give your items. You know, and not hand it over instead of trying to like argue. I guess, but I don't know. But then again, it depends on what the intentions of that person was. I mean, we never we'll never know because they they might have you know tried to kidnap her or something. That would have been horrible. But anyway. Okay, examination over. I'm gonna disinfect the equipment. You can get dressed. Hmm. Uh, Bennett's body. Full of eyes, I assume. So it looks like scars, though. Was it like he had, he had, well, like his whole backstory was like, he was taking some experimental drugs or whatever that made his skin like that. And full of eyes and everything. Uh, thanks, Miss Honaker. So how's it? Hmm. I don't think, I, I don't think these bruises will ever heal. Unless we skin you or replace the tissue completely. Yeah, I don't think you want it. Even though you're emotionally dead unless medicated, it's gonna hurt like hell. Can't laugh about that. <laughs> if it's a smile, I can always give you one, see? Just like I was taught in the labs. Stop it, that's not funny. It's weird, Mr. Honaker. I'm so desensitized to cruelty and violence that I no longer feel saddened or shocked by them. I don't think I'm capable of crying either. Or feeling anything, really. Everything is just mundane. Well, humans are an adaptive species. If all you see every day is atrocities, I, you can't help but get used to them. Yeah, I guess you're right. Forget I said anything. You hate being sober that much? When I am, I start having thoughts. I'd rather not think, Mr. Honaker. That should be your thing to do. Good night. Well, he's right. It's not really something I should concern myself with. I have to focus on my research while I still have the time. Before I waste away, because I think the the, clo the whole clone thing, by the way, where Hanukkah gets cloned, is still like a thing. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know how much of the story is like canonical from the from the from the actual main trilogy, or is this like something a weird like side thing? I don't know. Well, we're strolling in the park after school again, though. The weather isn't particularly good, but I have an umbrella with me. Would you say that you are a umbrella man? No, no. <laughs> Vincent doesn't mind the rain, but I do, so I follow him like the butler of a rich household. His throat is bandaged. Vincent doesn't bring it up, and I don't ask. We stop at a small bridge. Oh, there's something I've been meaning to tell you for a while. No way. Is it a love confession, Mr. Fennel? Almost. I've been writing a novel. Oh, what's it called? Ether Almanac. Sounds fancy. I'm still in the process of writing, and frankly, there's a lot to do, but I published some chapters already. If you're willing to give it a read, I'll be happy to share it. Of course. I mean, you can't write badly. <laughs> Thank you for the trust. It's a collection of short stories centered around one divine being. It needs a lot of improvement, and I expect any my target demographic to be older than myself. Still, it's a work I love dearly. It's the first time I heard him use love in regard to something. Well, maybe he's found his passion, actually. That's good. You know, it seemed like he was very empty on the inside. So maybe he's found something he liked to do. So that's good. I should read it soon, I thought. Yet ended up postponing it until the very last minute. Oh, no. One's writing is a mirror of one's soul. I was afraid of my imaginary construct of Vince's shattering upon looking into it. Oh, Ether Almanac. Kind of like Ether Rand, maybe? Uh, well... In the land of eternity, there lived a scientist. Exiled from her homeland for heresy against their beliefs, she decided to travel around the world to see all of its wonders. She saw civilizations rise and fall, stars explode, and new forms of life come into existence. 
After thousands of years of wandering, she began to grow weak in her limbs. She walked and walked until she stumbled and fell down to the ground. There she lay for days, unable to get up on her own. People passed by. Some asked if she was feeling unwell. Some pitied her and gave her food to eat. Some gave advice on how to get back to her feet. But nobody extended a hand. One day she felt someone lift her up or lift up her weakened frame. She looked up and saw a being she couldn't quite describe, as its form was constantly changing. It was the most fascinating sight she had ever seen. What are you? the scientist asked. I cannot be defined by mere words, and laughed, amused by her question. Some call me White Queen, but that was only one of my many masks. I am neither man nor a woman, for I am not human. They say meeting me is a great blessing that happens once in many millions of years. Therefore, how about I grant you one wish, the being offered. Say, what do you wish for? The scientist thought of unlimited knowledge and the world's treasures and infallible health, but none of those wonders interested her any longer. Can you remain by my side, she asked, her voice growing weak as the realization that she grew tired of solitude dawned at her. Unfortunately, I cannot grant you that wish, as nothing can bind me, was the divine being's answer, and the scientist hung her head low. However, if it's a lifelong partner you want. Without as much as a warning, the creature tore off the scientist's finger, and her identical copy grew from it. Ah, yes. <laughs> now we won't, now we both won't be virgins, <laughs> you know? It's, it's self says. No. As the scientist screamed from the sharp pain that pierced her, the relentless god spoke again. It knows everything you do and understands you better than anyone ever would. It'll never leave your side and remain with you in life and death. When your sight fades, it'll become your eyes. When you lose strength in your legs, it'll carry you in its embrace. Together you are one. I dream of falling into a pit of identical corpses and wake up in a cold sweat. Okay, so I guess that was like a, one of the short stories that Vincent made, maybe? And maybe, I mean, obviously that might have been an inspiration, at least in the lore. I mean, everything is written by, you know, literally, if we're talking about real life, it's written by Etherim, right? So I wonder how how much of that is like after or before. But, you know, in, in the lore anyway, I assume that story is very similar to the ideas he thought up of in his like own mind, right? His own like little mind world in the main games. But uh, Henri's idly browsing her phone as I struggle to finish a mission in a shooter I was playing, you know, Call of Duty. Wow, Fennel's sure, po uh, Fennel sure popular. I just looked up his novel and it has like 15 fan communities. You know, he's like a famous author now. Oh. What are you acting all surprised for? Aren't you his fan or something? Stop it, I'm not a blind follower. I read his writing the other day. It's good, like really good. But I didn't like it. Well, okay. Care to explain? Well, the overarching theme of his story is that you can only save yourself. It's like other people don't exist or can't be of any help even if they're around. His characters either choose solitude or end up in circumstances where they are surrounded by their own selves. Don't you think it's closed-minded to think that way? Wow, Eiler. I knew you were dense as a brick, but not to this extent. What do you mean? Henri rubs her temples and gives me a reprimanding stare. <sighs> Listen... Doesn't all this remind you of a certain someone? Yes, because it's a writing about himself. Anyway. Young people! Oh, breaking news! Young people aged 12 and 16 found dead on the shore. The motives behind their deaths remains unclear. Numerous sources report that they are all frequent visitors of Heaven's Gate community website, a webcode whose beliefs may have led them to suicide. I told you! This is why you be careful not to make a suicide cult. Well, Vincent skipped school for three weeks. When I see him again, there's a mask plastered on his face. Vincent Fennel is smiling. Oh, creepy smile though. Interlude. God. When it's dark in the morgue. We sit on the cold uh, ceramic floor. Ceramic? Ceramic floor. Felix Honecker doesn't have long left to live. Or doesn't, yeah, doesn't have long left to live. Doesn't have long left to live. How are you feeling, Mr. Honecker? Tired, but that's nothing new. Is everyone pulling an all-nighter because of me? Yeah, even Florence didn't hold back on soap. Felix sighs. 
Even though I did, I did nothing to deserve this kind of treatment, you all chose to act stupid. What are you sulking for, idiot? You'll see me tomorrow. That person won't be you. I doubt anyone would notice. The, I doubt anyone would notice the difference. It's not like I did anything remarkable during my lifespan. You give a shit about me, although you give a shit about everyone, just like Henry. Before he fell ill. Henry. Okay, there's a different Henry. That's very confusing. There's multiple Henrys. Isn't Henry? Yeah, Henry's the, you know, the the guy of the gas mask, right? The original person that Felix is based on. His uncle, I think, or is it someone else? I don't know. Anyway. It's unfair. We both know I'm a copy. First, Mr. Honecker tells me he's all gonna care, then he complains when I do. Which is it? Do you believe in God, Bennett? No. Henry Huxley isn't someone as shallow as that. I see. Then it must be the same for me, too. Mr. Honecker, I will make friends with you the next time we meet. It's a promise, then. Okay. Exams, though. Exam time. Exams are stressful, but they're nothing I'm unprepared for. After all, I've always been a diligent student. I get paired with Henri during the langu uh, language exam. We pass with flying colors. You know, we get paired for exams. That's kind of weird. Is that how it works? Unless it's like a presentation or something? No. Vincent, however, remains as distant as ever. For the past month, we haven't gotten to talk at all. I wonder what he's thinking. How disappointing. I can't seem to find any topics to discuss with you, Eiler. No, no, no. Vince is not that petty. The very fact that you thought it'd be like that makes you the petty one. The truth is yours, imaginary Mr. Fennel. I understood that the way I use words impacts the people around me, so I decided to distance myself from people who are easily influenced. More plausible. But doesn't that mean he thinks very little of me? Ugh. There's no guarantee that we'll keep in touch after graduating, either. I can't shake out the feeling of frustration welling up and I'm, lo and I'm losing sleep at night, okay? We're just overthinking it, by the way. We haven't really talked to him. We're just imagining him, what, like, what he's thinking instead of actually talking to him. You know, it's like always, always a central conflict in any story. It's like you just never just go up and talk about it. You just dance around the idea. Yeah. I'm so anxious that I decided to discuss it with Henri. She likes food, so I lure her in by inviting her to a cafe, you know, like a pet. He wrote what? Henri stabs a cherry tomato on her plate. It makes a popping sound and bursts. Uh, maybe telling her wasn't a good idea after all. So what if he is a cult leader? So what if he's, what if he's a cult leader? You know? I want to talk to him again. Besides, he only helped copyright the text. It's not like he involved himself in their activity. Ugh, your moral compass just did a complete 180 right now. Listen. I'm sure he understands the weight of his actions. His current isolation must be just damage control. Are you sure he's not just a control freak who enjoys having power over others? God, Henri, are we talking about the same person here? He's the most tactful person I know. He wouldn't... If you commit suicide because he told you your imaginary world will become real, don't come crying to me. Aha, uh -huh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge again, because that's exactly what happens in the main games. Anyway. You can't cry if you're dead, Miss Warhol. Ugh. Anyway. Benno's dangerous, okay? People like him harm others without even realizing it. That accident confirmed it. If he's a writer, he should take full responsibility for the messages he's communicating. And don't go it's their own fault on me. But it is. Everyone has their own brains. If they decided to self-destruct after hearing they're in a video game, then they were already predisposed to it. Hmm. Well, you better not tell these people that they're in the visual novel. Yeah. They just saw the cult site and BAM! Confirmation bias activated. They wanted a motive, they got it. I would never end my life just because I stumbled on some creepy pasta on the internet. <laughs> it's just, it's creepy pasta. It would take more than that. Like, mother's death. Hmm, that's like a death flag. Actually, again, that probably a reference to the... Yeah, the main games again, but anyway. Or my own health deteriorating to the point where I start hurting others. Then I... Hey, stop it. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't think I'm completely right either. Circumstances are different in each individual's case, I know that. I'm just worried about him. Knowing Vincent, he'll never talk about himself. Which is okay with me if that's what he wants. But if I keep ignoring this, what if he... 
What if... I think of running on the field. Children are laughing, illuminated by the sun. People like that don't live long. <laughs> Is this what they said in the flashback? Fine, I get it. Talk to them when you get the chance, okay? I'm sure you two will figure something out. I walk Henri home and wave her goodbye. When I see Vincent next time, what should I tell him? No matter what I'll say, I'll find myself afraid of hearing his answer. Well, time is ticking. It's graduation time. The graduation day finally comes. Time sure flies. Charlie, over here. Wow, he looks really different. Cool. And he looks like Umbrella Man. <laughs> Hello, do you really not recognize me? I think you just aged by nine years. <laughs> Ow! Okay, okay, seven? Ah! Please stop kicking me, Miss Warhol. I know I look good. You do too. I look like my father. You hate it? I don't know anymore. All that matters is that mother is doing better. Henri pats my head. Okay, try to have fun today. Thanks, you too. I look for Vincent in the crowd. He's talking to one of our teachers, all smiles as usual. I join in as a shadow. Like I, I sneak into his shadow. Eiler. You look different. You look tired. <laughs> Do I? Well, I suppose I'm not really fond of long ceremonies. Is Miss Warhol now with you? She's participating in the photo shoot with, uh, with the other girls. I ran away as soon as I saw the camera. Vincent laughs, a vis a visibly amused. And it's too stuffy in this suit. I have to agree. But there's nothing much we can do about it, right? Yeah, I just want to be over soon. By the time we get to the rented conference hall, it's already evening. The banquet doesn't interest me, but I already paid for it, so I stuffed myself full of random app, uh, app, appetizers. Vincent's dissecting a steamed carrot with a precision of a surgeon at a nearby table. He seems bored. The moment I decide to approach him, he's engaging in a conversation with someone else. Too bad. I decide to look for Henri and fire her surrounded by girls on the floor below. She looks like she's having fun, so I leave her to it. It dawns at me that out of all the people in class, I only managed to become somewhat friendly with two. With the rest, I don't really have anything to talk about. Unless it's homework. Maybe it's for the best if we forget each other's names after we all go separate ways. I mean, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a very common experience, really. Do you really remember all the people you, you, you know, are acquainted with in high school? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, most people forget almost literally everyone, so I don't know. Unless you are really, really adamant about keeping a lot of friends, I guess. But I don't see the point. Because, you know, a lot of people just, from high school, a lot of people just go their separate ways, right? It's hard to keep in contact. Anyway. In the corner of my eye, I see Vincent leaving the hall. You're leaving? Just taking a walk outside. It's a bit noisy in here. Oh, alright. It doesn't look like he's going to come back. See you later, then. See you. Crap, his coat is still here. Well, that gives me an excuse. <laughs> when I round the building, Vincent is nowhere to be seen. I jog a bit to the main road until I spot a familiar silhouette. Uh, Fenno, wait, your coat. Ah, uh, thank you. You need to have run. I would have come back for it later. It didn't seem like him. Vincent covers his mouth with his hand, hiding the surfacing emotion. <laughs> Is that so? Mind if I walk with you for a bit? Sure. We walk in silence. There's too much on my mind, but I can't put any of it into words. Somehow we ditched the prom night without really planning to. I don't think anybody's going to look for me today anyway. We reach a viewpoint on the hill. It's the highest platform in the old town. Vincent is panting lightly, exhausted from climbing the stairs. <sighs> it's pretty high up here, isn't it? I'm not fond of high places. It feels all too familiar for some reason. I feel sick. I like them though. Even the air here feels clearer. Vincent leans over the fence and inhales the night air. Being above everything. Leaving all the noise and commotion down below. Don't you feel the same? No. I feel like I could fall down in any second. Hmm, I see. Oh, are you alright? I crouch down, my head spinning. I'm not alright. It's like we've been here before. Yet it's not the same. It's like... It's like deja vu, you know, from a different timeline. You... You never talk about anything that really matters, do you? Always all smiles and big talk. 
Talking, 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 yet nothing you say has real weight to it. I'm sick of your smiling face. What? Ah, I see. Should I say what you want to hear then? Or agree with everything you say like you always do? Ugh. My personality has nothing to do with this. Does it? I'm led to believe that you're as much of a control freak as I am. No matter how much others worry about you, you decide to shoulder everything on your own. That's because of how my mother is. That's because I don't want to be a burden. But for you, it's all about your image. But if I ask for help, who would provide it? You? At the very least, I listen to what you have to say. You just don't trust me enough. You don't trust anyone. Vincent's eyes gleam with ice. The only one who sees a problem in it is you, Eiler. You're not the solution to my problems. Neither am I to yours, even though you seem to think otherwise. Needles and knives. His words pierce through, but I don't fault her. I know. Yet I want to understand you. It's not your fault that I don't. You're someone I've always looked up to. You could do things I couldn't and find the right words to influence others. Like a really... He's like a, you know, like a social media influencer. I don't know, anyway. It's very popular in TikTok. And I always felt like your opinion mattered. I crouched down and faced the ground, suddenly flustered. I... I thought I wouldn't mind losing my individuality if it meant getting influenced by yours. It's kind of weird way to say I wouldn't mind being a... Like a, like a follower of your TikTok. I don't know, anyway. Vince's gaze becomes absent-minded. I'm a bit envious. I have no one like that. It's only myself always have been. I have no role model and have a hard time finding a reflection of myself in other people. It's like standing on the other side of a one-way mirror. But I don't think of others as inferior to myself. In fact, I like people a lot. That's why I try to show with appropriate words. Language passwords. Just like we discussed once, remember? Did we? Wasn't that in a mind library with like... Frey or whatever? That's weird. Like, maybe, you know, uh, Charles's, like, imagination is blending in with reality or something. Friend. Soulmate. Partner. These are all very easy to say. The only difference is that while they have a meaning to others, these words sound empty to me. I've never felt close to anyone. The kind understanding Vincent Fennel didn't exist until I created him. I remember Vincent in the kindergarten. Emotionally dead kid gathering crowds around him with useless trinkets from popular shows. The only time he ever showed emotion was when he tore off wings from those ants, claiming to be in control. Control. Is that what it's all about? You claim that you don't mean things you say. That your personality is fabricated. I don't think you're being entirely honest. You're right. I don't mean it either. Ugh, he's insufferable. You... However, Vincent isn't looking at me. His mind is elsewhere. It's like there's a wall between myself and the rest. Ever since my childhood. I've been trying to break through it by trying to be someone I'm not. You know, fake it until you make it. Yet it's meaningless. Even if I make it seem like he exists, I can't become him. Deep inside, I must be the same child who laughed at those ants whose wings I, he tore off. Just because it was the only time when he felt like he was in control over someone's life. Because he lacked control over his own. Still, you've been trying your best, haven't you? All this talk about a quiet place, those bruises. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that whoever you live with, they've been... I stumbled my own words. They haven't been treating you well. The Vincent I remember was an empty husk of a person. It's like you were never physically there at all. Yet with time, you were able to regain control over your life. It's not that you became someone whom others look up to overnight. You worked hard for it. Because you care. That's just a life narrative you constructed for me. It's nothing that pretty. I can't be proud of being a hypocrite. Would you rather dissociate for the rest of your life? I don't want that either. Both choices are wrong. There's just no hope for me, is there? This life. I already tried to put an end to it. A month ago. Huh? I didn't think much of it. It was something I knew would happen one day or another. Naturally. Yet I'd end up not going all the way. I thought, huh, I still haven't returned the notebook. I was supposed to put an end to everything. For a ridiculous reason like that, I didn't. My eyes begin to sting, but no tears come out. I... 
I, I may be insignificant and frankly boring, but I'm going to do my best to become someone you can consider, you can consider your equal, so that you won't feel so alone. I'll keep doing my best, so, so, y so you, so I. In the corner of my eye, I see Vincent crouching down near me, putting a hand on my shoulder. Don't push yourself, he says, his gaze remaining frozen. You're already doing enough. Empty words and template phrases. Neither of us can find comfort in each other's words. Neither of us know what to do. I want you to live, I croak out. Not to a corpse, not to an imaginary construct, not to a vacant shell, but to Vincent Venno himself. History repeats. I can't see his face. I see, Vincent says simply. No tears, no surprises. That's how Vincent Fenno is. Yet his words sounded almost thankful. Vincent gets up and extends his hand to me. Well, congratulations on graduating, Charles. I reach out and accept his hand. The future still remains uncertain, yet I feel like I'll be able to fall asleep tonight. Then the sun rises. A new day has come. And it's the end. Alright, okay. Um. Okay, alright. I mean, yeah, okay, so this is just like... I could only assume, I mean, obviously, I don't know if it's canon or not, but it's kind of like this, like, what if everything actually ended on, like, a happy note, you know? At least in regards to Charles' story, right? Because we learned a little bit about it in, in the third game and everything, right? So what if everything turned out mostly fine, and on top of that, you know, we also learned a little bit more of their, like, upbringing, I guess, right? More and more, like, uh, context for everything. So I guess that's how it would be, though. They end up, you know, even though Vincent, I guess, I don't know what you would call it. It's some kind of, like, thing going on. I'm hesitant to say, like, he's, like, a psychopath or anything. I think it's just, he's just more, like, emotionally dead more than anything else, right? I think that's what it is. Because probably from abuse or whatever. And that's why he feels empty on the inside. That's why, he, you know, he commits suicide in the... And like, uh, like in the main games anyway, but I guess in this story, it ends up not doing that because, you know, there's something that ties him to life, I assume. You know, maybe they're not, you know, I don't know, again, it's kind of like implied that they might have been lovers or something, I don't know. But, uh, maybe not though, maybe they're just best friends. You know, everyone's just friends with each other, really, no romance, just like, they're just friends, they're just pals. Everyone's just pals with each other. Uh, I want to see more of Henri with uh, with uh, Vincent, though. You know, they didn't really interact with each other all that much. You know, I want them to, like, hang out, maybe. They did mention that they talked a little bit, but I don't know. But I, 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 I want them all together, you know, to hang out some more. I don't know. Anyway. But yeah, just just a little bit more about Charles, more about Vincent and Henri and all that. Who's that, by the way? I don't know who that person is. What she's holding? I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, very much... Uh, uh, well, I hesitate, I, I hesitate to say mundane, but definitely more grounded in reality, I would say, this story, right? Instead of all the really weird symbolism and all that, it's kept to a minimum, I feel like, right? It's less confusing, much more straightforward. There are definitely some scenes, though, where, you know, they the, the, the some of the characters, uh, like the aliens, right? And the, a little bit of, like, Charlotte, even, you know, just very briefly. Um, I can only assume... You know, they just made cameos just because <laughs> the, the writer, you know, Ethan just wanted to put them in real quick. Uh, but also, I guess, to represent maybe, like, a bit of, like, what maybe Charles is writing. I assume that's his, like, story, right? Writing about those characters, maybe. I'm not sure. But anyway. Yeah, there you go. Not much to say, really. Again, really straightforward. It's really just learning more about the characters and, you know, less confusion of what uh, what their lives are like, I guess. More exposition on them. That was, uh, that was interesting, I guess. Less, um, again, less, uh, uh, well, I, I would say a much more different tone than it was in the main games. But then again, I feel like that's what the developer often does, you know, change up the tone and all that. There's more though, by the way. I say I was, I'm unfinished. There's a little bit more. I don't know how long it is. But if you pay for this game, you actually get to experience the diary, which, uh, I think it's okay to show. I mean, I don't know if there's any, I, I don't know what the developer's preference is. I try to look for it. I don't know if they said anything, but... I think it's okay to show it. I mean, it's not that expensive, really. It's just a few bucks. But if you pay for it, then you get to see a diary, right? This I feel like I think this option is only available if you pay for the either the DLC on Steam or just pay directly on Itch.io. 
I believe this is Audrey's diary. Oh, let's see. Just a small little aside thing. But uh, one day, a mother of a young family brought home a doll. She did so out of necessity rather than on a whim or out of a strong desire. It wasn't the kind of doll you normally see on the shelves of a large supermarket. It wasn't a particularly beautiful model, being pudgier and noisier than her peers. Her insides were made out of slime that always seemed to ooze out of her nose and mouth. Okay. Weird. Did you like squeeze it? I don't know. But the mother seemed to be content with those unsightly defects. The doll was supposed to melt into a sticky, dripping wet, foul-smelling glue that would keep the mother's marriage from falling apart after all. The father didn't want to keep the item. But to his disappointment, the shop didn't accept any returns. The doll became a fitting addition to the house's interior, for she fit perfectly among the counterfeit porcelain tea sets and useless trinkets stuffed onto the shelves. Pictures reflecting her snotty face, uh, face fit up the family albums, a thousand fabricated certificates of a model family life. Hmm. One day, the glue went dry and the family fell apart. As the porcelain plates hit the walls and the trinkets fell off from the shelves, the doll remained still. The slime inside of her returned to water and flooded the room. The woman who bought it left the house, leaving all her former possessions behind. A new owner soon came, and Henry was born. Hmm. Okay. By the way, okay, so that, I mean, obviously, that's all a metaphor, by the way. So basically, uh, Henri was, uh, was a baby that was born from kind of like a failing marriage. But, you know, eventually when she grew up, you know, her mother eventually divorced her, like, her biological father. And then a new, you know, and then eventually uh, her mother found a new husband, I guess. And that's how her brother was born from, a, like, you know, like, from her stepfather, I assume. Anyway. I never felt like others treated me like a human being. Rather, I was an object, a commodity in human disguise. To my family, I was akin to a not particularly expensive piece of furniture that I kept around despite having bought a replacement. To my classmates, I was a wind-up doll they could push around by provoking it, laughing at how clumsy it was. Due to the almost too cliché parental neglect, I was never taught proper hygiene. Oh, so that's why she was smelly. <laughs> so my... my <laughs> I'm sorry. So my peers made sure to laugh at the way I smelled after forgetting to shower for weeks and the way dirt gathered under my fingernails. They hid my clothes after P.E. and called me names, but it didn't matter. I didn't matter. Hmm. Well, good thing you know now. Yeah, you gotta shower. As soon as puberty hit, I became even more convinced I was more, no more than an object. Maybe it's because I used to eat too much, or maybe due to genetics, I grew to be more well-endowed than other girls my age. Disgusted looks I used to get turned into something more primal and feral. Lust. Oh no. <laughs> it's like, boobies. Oh my god. Star for attention I wanted to be desired. A gift needs pretty wrapping, a realization came. Under my modest clothes, I wore stockings and garter belts. Asked for expensive underwear as a birthday present began paying more attention to my hygiene. My hair became perfectly combed, not a single strand out of place. Porcelain skin nurtured by evening masks and face cream. Fake, but no longer unwanted. People I never talked to began asking me out. Girls swarmed around me, talking about boys, periods, and reality shows I couldn't bring myself to care about, but I watched it anyway. You know, hey, very similar to Vincent, you know, just, just follow whatever trends that other people are following just to stay relevant. I never did that. Instead, I just watch anime. <laughs> it was a loop. Whoops. I failed at that aspect. It was something new. Something I didn't know I longed for. My first case was with a girl. Wow. She kissed the girl and she liked it. You know, wasn't that like a song about that? It was at a drinking party and everyone was drunk and horny enough to play sex dice. Sex dice? What the heck is sex dice? Obviously meant for older crowds. I didn't like her, but I like how it felt. I decided I wanted more. All right, Henri. I guess I'm. I don't know. I guess she's in that case. Well, I don't know. She did date like uh, Charles and everything. It did seem that she did like him. You know, she did. She was sad that the relationship didn't work out. So maybe she's just, she's just bi. You know, she's bisexual. By the way, <laughs> anyway. Uh, silky shirts, uh, short skirts, and knee socks. Fluttering lashes, flawless mascara. 
not a single pimple on my skin. It didn't matter that I was stuffed with chunks of meat swarming of maggots. Mm. Squirming, wriggling, eating me from the inside. I guess maggots. Oh, uh, I guess it. I guess it wasn't mad cats, you know? Mad cats would be better. Charles Isla wasn't a particularly attractive person. Uh, let, uh, let aside, or set aside, let aside his above average looks. Something about his attitude gave away that something wasn't right. Maybe it was the way he scratched his skin and bit his nails, or the way he stared into empty space, muttering something. There's no Wi-Fi on his flip phone, yet he was constantly taking it out of his pocket in short intervals. <laughs> I guess it's just... Uh, Habit, you know, I never got Wi-Fi on my phone for the longest time. Only very, very recently in my adult life do I have like a, a, a smartphone, actually, and all that. You know, and it wasn't because I was like a like a boomer. I just didn't really have like a smartphone. You know, I always had like uh, hand me downs. You know, I always had like a BlackBerry, like an old BlackBerry, right, and everything. But uh, typing a message to nowhere, sending an alarm clock off and back on. A foolproof tactic to ease rising anxiety. It's just to, just to seem like you're doing something, I guess. In class, he would often respond to the name of a girl classmate and everyone would start laughing. Hmm. He covered his mouth, mortified, realizing that the teacher's question wasn't directed at him. Oh, is it like, uh, Charlotte? Because he likes to roleplay as Charlotte, right? So he, uh, the teacher would call, like, Charlotte and he would think it was him, but it was not him. So. <laughs> Stifled mutterings, jerky movements, constantly on the edge, anxious and detached. Charles Arla was far from pleasant. Or maybe Scarlet? You know, well, I don't know, actually. In this timeline, it doesn't seem like Scarlet was a thing. So maybe that's the biggest difference, by the way. I was thinking maybe it was Scarlet or something. Yet I found us to be similar. It felt like there was something eating him from the inside. Maybe he was stuffed full of maggots, too. <laughs> Everyone's just stuffing maggots, I guess. I mean, it kind of reminds me of, uh... Aku no Hana, by the way. That, like, you know, sim symb symbolic representation of, like, you know, you're, like, you're feeling like, isolated from society. You're feeling you're different, you know? I guess. Can't, you don't really fit in. But uh, we were sitting in an empty classroom. I was absentmindedly scrolling down the feed of my phone. Ailey was finishing his homework for the next day. He did all the assignments during breaks and got excellent marks for it. I never got why he was such a, in such a rush. So uh, what's your answer, yes or no? Ireland didn't look me in the eye. Instead, he was looking at a spot between me and the window frame. What? Uh, sorry, what were you talking about? I couldn't hear you well in this noise. Ireland's voice echoed through the empty, eerily quiet classroom. <laughs> yeah, noise, what noise? Everyone else had gone home a long time ago. I started to get annoyed. Like I was saying, will you date me? Seconds passed, Ireland mutters indistinguishable words, still distracted by something. He was visibly uncomfortable. Okay. You what? You're okay with it? I mean, why not, if you want to? Listen, I... I need to go home. Quick, I'm sorry. His words made no sense. I let grab his bag and storm out of the classroom. What was that about? Okay. Hmm. Is this uh, the same timeline as the, the game we're playing right now? Because she, she asked that question in a, in a different time, right? Or, I don't know. Or maybe he didn't pay attention, he just forgot about it. Well, Henry used to be a high achiever in elementary. By middle school, he lost all motivation to study. Eventually, he stopped leaving his room. You need to spend more time with your brother, father had told me on numerous occasions, each time more insistently, his wife nodding behind his back. As if this smelly freeloader didn't get enough attention from them already. Of course, you know, their their favorite, you know, uh, son, I guess, or favorite child, because it's their biological child. But sometimes I sound the phone in my brother's room, listening to the click-clack sound of Henry's keyboard. It was always dark in his room. The air inside was damp, laced with a ling lingering stench of instant noodles and used tissues laying on the floor. Ugh. <laughs> Blur. Sometimes Henry got tired of playing and flopped in the dead bed near me. He was not a talkative kid, so I never got what he was thinking. Sometimes he crawled onto me and buried his head in my chest, just laying there as I blankly stared into space. That's kind of weird. Uh, anyway. I mean, you're, you're step-siblings, right? So, I don't know how, how much personal space you should be letting. Anyway. In the darkness barely illuminated by LED lights, he told me about his two-dimensional sweethearts. Ah, yes, but he's not blinded by the 3D boobies. Only his waifus he cares about. Like then, Henry brought out his smartphone and shoved it into my face. 
It's Space Idol Guriri. <laughs> All these are from the anniversary poll, he mutters, scrolling down his card collection. Mm -hmm. How much do you spend on her? Not much. Liar. And me. A reluctant applause. She's worth it. I felt tired. Hey, shouldn't you be interested in real girls your age? No. Who these best? <laughs> no, they're gross. Am I gross too? Kinda. Henry squeezed closer to me. Too close for comfort. I could smell his foul breath. Henry was extremely bad at maintaining hygiene, just like I had once been. Maybe it was in our jeans. <laughs> you know, the stinky jeans. He must be starved for a body contact without realizing, I thought absentmindedly. Hey, stop it. You're too close. Go ask mom to cuddle you. Henry didn't listen and only buried his head deep into my chest. He was like a toddler. Mom and dad only buy me things. They don't care about me. Believe me, they do. Unlike you, I didn't have that luxury. Say, why won't you leave your room? It's pointless. What is? Everything. There's nothing I want to do in life. The only times I feel happy are when I play games or sleep. But I don't want to die either. <coughs> Excuse. So I'll just stay here forever. And be a uh, hikikomori, you know. Already at uh, such a young age, by the way. He's already uh, neat. I mean, you still you know, need to go to school and everything, don't you? You can't be in need already. At least, you know, you need to at least suffer the crushing reality of uh, adult life. And then you be in need, right? Or something? I don't know. Charlie, you need to see a doctor. I gave Eiler's hand a firm squeeze. He was it's hard to tell, by, it's hard, by the way, it's hard to tell who's talking, by the way. I don't know. I try to give voices to characters sometimes, but then it's very confusing when it's like no, you know, indication of who's talking. But I gave Eiler's hand a firm squeeze. He was shaking. We were sitting on the cold floor in the boys' uh, bathroom. We were around 15 minutes until the third period ended. I was trying to ignore the writing on the wall. Warhol is a slut. Well, whoa, wow, that's so mean. Eiler responded with a minute-long delay. What would they do? Stuff me with pills? At the very least, they'll help. They didn't help mother. I'm talking about you. Charlie, please, stop pretending you're okay. If you're not planning on telling me what's wrong, then at the very least, try to seek help yourself. If I say anything, she'll throw my pet cat out of the window. Or worse. Okay, well, this is the Scarlet version of uh, the timeline, I feel like. This is, this is where Scarlet exists. At least the, you know, the imaginary one. She? Okay, I, under I understand. I didn't understand at all. But Eiler was shaking. He was completely terrified. I'm terrified too, of him and his mind. It's not your fault, is all I could say, unable to find the right words. Seeking comfort, I squeezed his hand harder. Mm -hmm. It was the end of the year party. There's something about the thrill of blaring music and fleeting conversations that I cannot quite put into words. There, I was able to forget who I am and who I cannot be. He must have been, uh, it must have, he must have be a guy, or must have been a guy, or must have been some guy from the parallel class. Pretty handsome, I had to admit. Care for a drink, he asked me. Sure, I replied, and I took the plastic cup from his hands. The room gradually began to till. Um, I, I, I'm, I have a bad feeling about this, by the way. This is not... Anyway. Are you okay? He asked. I'll take you the rest upstairs. There was something in my drink, I belatedly realized, as I was led to the upper floor. As my consciousness faded, I thought of Eiler. It was dawning at me that he didn't want to own, to possess, to consume. He didn't want me. He didn't want anything I was able to offer. He wanted something that couldn't be seen. Something immaterial. Uh, ethereal. He wanted to be saved, but I'm merely an object. My head was filled with mocking comments from my classmates, dice of the party, constant expectations, graffiti on the wall. I was trying so hard. I was trying my best, yet I was, why was I still not enough? When I came to, I was surrounded by girls, concerned yet relieved looks on their faces. I wanted to go home. Hmm. Okay, okay, I, she's also, okay, so she wasn't, you know, I mean, I can only assume she wasn't taking advantage of it. That would have been bad. I woke up one day to heated debates in the kitchen. It was probably about Henry. Nothing ever changed. I snuck into his room, trying not to make a sound. Hmm. He was curled into a ball under the desk, shaking, muttering something. Henry, it's me. Come out. Stop hiding. Leave me alone. 
What happened? They want to fix me, send me to therapy. And? I don't want to be fixed. Give me a break. <laughs> Just look how much they cared about you. About your useless, stinky, perverted... I had to calm down. And what do you want? To be with Kuriri. <laughs> You're to be my waifu. Kuriri's not a person. I don't give a shit. Hey, language. You just don't want to make any effort to gain positive emotions in real life. Henry got quiet for a moment. I'm tired was his only, his only answer. I'm tired too. <laughs> okay. Tired of taking care of him as well. Charles Eiler started taking pills. No more jerky movements. No more staring into space. There was a permanent smile plastered on his face. He seemed alarmingly normal. And that's not normal though. You know, when a character is just suddenly normal. We went out for food and movies. I made sure to Instagram all the food we ate and the places we visited. It would sure become the proof of our normalcy. I talked about myself and Isla actually heard me instead of spacing out, erratically checking his phone and muttering something under his breath. In turn, Isla told me about Mother, about things he saw the others didn't, about a writer he admired, you know, some other like writer he you know, followed. You know. Everything just was normal, just like I wanted it to be. Well, not for long. <laughs> so like, did you two do it already? Says girl A. Or whatever. Oh, come on. Of course we did. Oh my god, for real? He seems like a whip, though. I bet it was the worst. Uh, TBH, you deserve so much better. You aren't lying, right? I can't believe that Eiler is capable of anything more than hand-holding. Hand-holding, that's loose. Yeah, like, did he finally man up? If a guy doesn't want you, then there must be something wrong with his dick. <laughs> Looks like you have to take action and help him overcome it somehow. Otherwise, your relationship is doomed, lol. Right, Henri? No, yeah. Okay. I, I doubt... Did they do it? I don't know. Anyway. This doesn't insult you. Uh, I asked, showing Isla the group chat. I lied to them about everything, but, you know. Oh, okay, <laughs> so you did lie. Charles yawned, shaking his head in disinterest. You only get ins uh, insulted when you view something as insulting, C says. You leverage, so no, it doesn't. Hey, what the hell? I thought you'd be hurt or something. Charles laughed mischievously. What, you want me to console you, Miss Warhol? I turned away, burrows uh, furled. I gotta accept you, though. They don't know you at all. He was taken aback at first and roughed my hair with his blistered hand. Sorry. Know what Stoics say? You are provoked by your own judgment of the situation. And we can't expect people to view us the way we perceive ourselves. So don't worry about me. Here he goes again, apologizing. I was fairly sure that even if he understood all this, some part of him must have been affected. But his words were somehow reassuring. Did he feel the same when he talked to C, I wonder? Feeling above everything, unaffected by surrounding opinions. That person really must be someone strong if they were able to influence Charles to an extent. If I stay by his side, maybe I'll be saved one day too, I thought. Oh, she thought that. And that thought alone felt comforting enough to help me get through another day. Uh, Charles turned on a horror movie and I fell asleep on his shoulder. Personal space be damned. <laughs> that was the last conversation we had before everything went to shit. <laughs> when, when shit hit the fan. The god of his world was no more. Fifteen. Diary is long. Months later, we moved to another town. It was never my decision to make. I left most of my possessions to, at, the whole, uh, at the old home. Henry played Pokemon, <laughs> goddamn Pokemon, <laughs> during the old entire trip, then vomited onto my shirt. Car sick. Okay. I pet his oily hair, letting my nails sink into the flakes of chronic suburbia and dead skin. Ew. I thought of Charles once again. Was that anything to ground him when he float away? The last moments we spent together had already felt like he wasn't present. As if the maggots swarming inside of him had already consumed his insides. How unfair. 5. Hey, how are you, Charlie? You should leave him alone, Henrietta Warhol. I learned being serious. So am I. Please stop writing to us. Who's us? Why? You're a hindrance. If you continue pestering us, I'll make your personal information public. You have things to hide, don't you? Four. Henri, hi. I'm sorry for last time. Feel free to block me. Okay, now you sound like Charles. Apology accepted. Hi. Are you okay? More or less. How's mom? Like usual, I'm trying to spend more time with her. That's nice. How are you holding up? I'm fine, trying to adjust to a new place. Hun Henry's an idiot and blew a whole lot of money at online gambling, so dad took, on, <laughs> took his debit card. You know, he's wrote too much in the gacha. Serves him right, I guess. I'm working as a waitress right now, so I have my own income. I guess most of this money will go to my parents anyway. Debts and all. Do you have plans for uni or? I'm taking a year off. Can't deal with it right now. 
I'm not sure what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, only the job you're crazy about can get you a good income. Or just luck, really. Higher education won't promise you a good place in life. Nice pasta. <laughs> nice copy and paste. Get, did you get to med uni? I'll know in a month. I don't really remember the day of the exam. Hmm. Oh, is that... You know, when he always says the trial, you know? And you remember in the games when Charles would always mention the trial? Or even the Charlotte, really. Maybe that's a representa uh, representation of uh, the exam to get, like, medical university or something? Or medical school? Hmm. Uh-oh. What will you do if you don't pass? Uh, kill myself, I guess. <sighs> well, I mean... <laughs> no, just joking. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Don't worry about it. It's not funny. I know. I'm being serious. I have mother to take care of, so don't worry. Three. Andre, how are you? Okay, now we're just like hearts. Heart emojis, gross. Iris, is that really you? Of course it's me. Uh, okay. I'm fine. I'm having trouble adjusting to a new place. Didn't make any friends yet. I don't want to pretend to be someone else just to fit in, but no one really wants to hang out with me when I'm myself. I feel alone. Are you doing okay? I'm okay. X, 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 X. <laughs> Specifically asked not to talk about the remnants, though. Yeah, the remnants. What? The remnants? Okay. <sighs> Charlie, I'm... I'm scared of you. What are you becoming? I thought I didn't understand you before, but now I feel like I don't understand you at all. I'm not really sure what to do. You need to seek help. Nope. Then another spot. Shit. I'm so sorry. If you're reading this, it's me. I'm not okay. I'm not sure if I'm myself anymore. Sometimes I just close my eyes and I find myself in an unfamiliar place several hours later. Oh yes, that's um... That's uh... That's called um... Oh, what's the word? I already forgot what the word is. Oh, it being in a fugue state. Yeah, that's what it was. I think I mentioned how, that's how I described the game. You know, but maybe that's not exactly what it is. Anyway. I pass the exams, but I'm feeling class is hard. I feel like vomiting just looking at people. They don't look human. I'm afraid if we meet again, you won't look human too. So please, don't try to find me. Mother's not okay. She's not responding anymore. Everything is distorted. And I'm clearly bothering you. I need to put a stop to this. Those are last messages from Charles. His phone went dead. He never replied back. Trying to cope with his reality, I tried to forget about him. Alright. Well, I guess, yeah, that's what happened, right? Okay, well, I mean... Alright. That kind of, that's kind of like a confirmation of what happened, right? What was really going on? At least in the main trilogy, anyway? Because not what happened in this game, but like, you know, in the actual main games. Hmm. Which is sad, but really it's just, you know, just how it is, I guess. Like, his, like he started, like, his mental state started deteriorating, you know? He started, like, having this weird psychosis, I guess, where he's, like, being other people or something. He's just forgetting his own identity, I guess. I can only assume. Which it is, yeah, it's true, actually. When people get, like, get into, like, a fugue state, which is when, like, um... It's when, it's when you, like, start... You just end up just going somewhere random, and then you just you don't even realize it, and you're like you're like someone else, you know, for a, for a bit, I guess, or something. I don't know. But yeah, he's really having those kind of episodes, I guess. Probably not taking his pills, you know. That's probably what would caused it. On top of the stress of like you know, getting into medical school, medical school and everything, mm. and of of course his mother dying. I can only assume. Anyway. Well, next page in the diary, uh, a year later, I found that the Eilers no longer live at the old address. Charles Eiler had disappeared without a trace. I want to think he's okay, but I know better. Lilith Eiler was buried in a local cemetery. Hmm, Lilith Eiler. I mean, that's probably his mother. Looks like Charles took care of her burial before disappearing. I won't live longer than Mother would, he once told me, and stay true to his words. I like to think that his soul went where she is. Perhaps he's lying on the bottom of a vast sea, his form flickering uncertain. Well, I mean, it's probably what happened. I want to lie down near and make sure his carcass doesn't float away. But that's a selfish wish to have. Instead, I place a bouquet on their grave and whisper a quiet prayer. That's the end of the diary. Oh my god, that's so sad, but I guess that's more of what actually happened. At least from Henri's perspective, you know? More, the more, like, I guess, uh, realistic perspective. Of what's going on in the in the true I you know realm I guess before the events of the game, where I where it's like I don't know it's really just assumed that it really is like when he died or whatever when he committed suicide all all of the events of the game if you really want to take a very like cynical point of view really is that uh, it really is just moments before he died right it's just like all his little things kind of like a dream really. 
you know, you know how like you, uh, you know, you know how they always say like you you see your life flash before your eyes. It's kind of like that, except instead of memories, it's kind of like this weird dream world that he like ended up being in. You know, and then by the end, obviously, it it this it, it, like you know he just dies. You know, that's it. That's it. He just dies. I don't know. Uh, or you can, you or you can be like you know, or you can be more optimistic i guess maybe if it's like religious i guess maybe it's like he did find like a a weird heaven maybe and his heaven is like his own mind or something I don't know. but anyway but yeah it's just kind of sad this is all just sad really you know but it's just how it is yeah so the story is i mean heaven's gate like the the visual novel itself i can only assume it's like an alternate timeline where everything did not go like horrible and nobody like <laughs> uh died at least the main characters anyway died i think it was mentioned that some students committed suicide but you know not the people that we know so ha, you know, we, we don't care about them anyway um but yeah we learn more about them in the actual like heaven's gate timeline but the diary is definitely based on uh, the main events of the game uh where you know on we just continue to live our life you know and then that's just how yeah how, how she coped with it you know she just Lived on, I guess, with a burden in her heart, but uh, she decided to live compared to all the others, I guess. She's the only survivor. <laughs> but anyway, well, there you go. I mean, not much else to say. It's just, man. <laughs> um, I, oh, I, I forgot to mention in the very beginning, but uh, this is a kinetic novel, by the way. So, like, there's no choices to make or anything. It's just like, you know, it's just like reading a story, really. But I guess I forgot to mention that. But whatever. Um, but yeah. I don't know. Just just very like... I guess it was interesting. Kind of like... It's really just like side material really. But uh, I guess if you wanted to know... You know, if you want to learn more uh, about like... The other side of like Hello Charlotte. You know, especially in the... You know, again, the whole like Charles thing and everything. I guess it would be an interesting read. But there you go. I, I guess that's it. Um, yeah. Again, no background music. It feels weird for no background music. I actually would have... It would be better with background music. It's just me reading silently. You know, so it's kind of weird. I prefer if there was like a little bit of music, but oh well. Anyway. But there you go. That was it for Hello Charlotte Heaven's Gate. Um, I guess if you didn't know, I stream these games live on Twitch. So check me out over there if you're interested. I also uh, don't know the games on my YouTube channel, so you can live with those if you want. I mean, obviously... You definitely would not want to look at this, uh, you know, video, I guess, by the end already if you didn't know about the Hello Shard series already. But I have done all the other Hello Shard stuff um, as well. Oh, and, and soon I will I'll probably, uh, on YouTube anyway, I also will do uh, another game, actually, that Ethren main. Uh, what is it called? I believe, just look it up real quick. It's uh, Tomorrow Won't Come for Those Without. You know, it's like an entirely different uh, universe and everything. But it's another game to, uh, made by a developer. I want to check that out too. Probably very soon after this one. But anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then.